Right now, you're a wild card uh, participant, uh, but you know better than anybody that that could certainly change uh, one way or the other. So I know these next three races are uh, very, very important for you and your race team. And talk about your, uh, your outlook for here tomorrow night at Bristol. Well, I, I just, um, any, you know, anything can happen in Bristol. We've seen it before and we'll see it again. But, um, you know, we just got to, it's no different than any other racetrack. You got to put yourself in position to be in contention at the end because you never know how it's going to shake out. And uh, our Outback Chevrolet was, was okay in practice. We need to work on it a little bit. But um, it's so tight and so, um, so um, competitive here, just uh, speed wise. It's hard to really know how you shake out until you get to those 70 and 80 lap runs. Um, just uh, got to got to give a big thanks to Outback. They've got an awesome promotion here this weekend um, with with our race car and and giving away a, a lot or offering up a lot, I should say, for for race fans. There's over of the 160,000 <laughs> people out there. Every one of them gets this flag and uh, a ten dollar coupon to Outback. And then if uh, if we win the race, uh, there are free Bloomin' Mondays for. Uh, for the entire month of September on, in mon on, on Mondays only. And um, 39 <laughs> lucky fans will get uh, free uh, Outback for a year, which is, which is pretty impressive. So really, really great partner for Stuart Haas Racing and myself personally to, to give so much to the fans and very thankful for that. But um, that's, why, that's why it's important for us to run well this week and not just because of the, uh, the, uh, the chase and all that stuff, but because we're, we're doing this for the fans and go out there and have fun. Very good. Monty, you got a question? Well, thank you, Kerry. Monty Dutton, Jackson Gazette. Uh, Ryan, when your team fills three cars instead of two, does it have any impact whatsoever on the way on you on the track, off the track, people working with you? Does it, it have any effect at all? It has the potential every time. It has the potential to, to have a positive effect and it has the potential to have a negative effect. It all depends on the performance of all three cars. Um, you know, it's just no different than than a, a chain. It's only as strong as its weakest link. And um, you know, we're we're out there doing doing what we can on the 39 side, and every 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 team is. But you know, it's um, it's it's business as usual for us when we're when we're on the racetrack. But it's you know the debrief sessions and things like that where we all get together and when things are right. You know, we can talk about the positive things, and when things are wrong, we figure out what not to do, um, so we can make the positives out of it. But um, you know, that's that's the same whether it's one, two, or three car teams. Is you still have the you still have the opportunity to communicate to the nth degree. Let's go to Mike Mulhern, and then we'll go to David Caravello. <clears throat> Mike Mulhern, Mike Mulhern. I like to ask questions. I of thought you. you wanted the flag. Oh, the flag. Yeah, sure. Because uh, you're an engineer, and this is an engineering question. Okay. Mark Martin hit the wall last week, pit road at Michigan. How would you redesign or refix or put the jersey barriers up? What would you do to prevent that or make that a little less dramatic? You know, I, I've thought about that a little bit. Um, the, only, the only thing that comes to mind off the top of my head is, is um, where Mark hit. That, that, was, that was the um, call to pit in, the, um, the, the pit out the box behind him. He hit where Casey Kane's pit is. I don't know whose pit was behind it. As if you could actually have a flare there so that there's still a vertical wall. But if, if Mark was to come through there the way he did, it would ramp him back out to the other wall instead of coming in and continuing into that wall. So you'd have to have like a, you know, just put a cheese wedge of, of wall there so that when somebody is coming through there at that speed, it, it shoves them out. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, you don't want to have a, you know, you could put up sand barrels there, but you're just going to blow sand all over everybody's pit box and everything else. I mean, yeah, it helps, but to me, a, a flared wall there would, would help. And you see that a little bit at a place like Darlington where we have the tunnel flares and things like that. But, um, you know, and it's it's something we've dealt with. There's no issues with it. But from a safety standpoint, I'd say a flared wall in positions like that on the, um, you know, the the back edge, and the, you know, the, the wall that you're just passing would, would be the, the fix in my mind. <coughs> You can use that if you want. I won't charge a 10% or anything. Go ahead, David. I'll take five. David Caravel and NASCAR.com. How, how sick were you last week? And in retrospect, how big was that eighth place, fi place finish, given what you were dealing with? I was, I was sick. I had a fever and pretty bad cold and achy bones and went to the infield care center and literally just came out of the infield care center and got changed and went to the car. But I felt better getting out of the car than I did getting in. Unfortunately, I still got that same bug, and I was in the infield care center this morning. So, um, Struggling with it a little bit, but um, I think of all the medicine that I've gotten, there's nothing better than adrenaline, and uh, adrenaline helps carry you through a lot. And um, I wish that I could put it in a pill form. I don't know if they have yet or not, but um, it's it's 
I'm, I'm managing. It's not the best. I don't feel the greatest. But in the car, I don't feel like I'm giving anything up. What's that? I did this morning, yes. <clears throat> Are the questions for Ryan? <clears throat> Anybody else? Really? Anybody else have a question? Woody? Better be a good one. <laughs> well, now I don't want to go. <laughs> Woody came with MRN. Ryan, after running the, the modified race and practice today, what do you think about the, the changes and how we'll, how we'll race on Saturday night? To me, it's the same. Um, you know, we, we don't usually get to the top part of the racetrack until the race itself. I don't know that it's really going to be slicker. It just never has gotten run on to get the rubber and stuff built up on it. Um, you know, right now it's slick because it's still kind of powdery up there. I don't know how much it's rained here and washed it off, but it just to me, it's everything's kind of washed up in there and stuck into it. As far as the dirt and the rubber and everything else, you know, to me, it's still the, the answer still is in the tire and getting the, the tire to fall off. Goodyear's Goodyear's overproduced when it comes to durability and performance, and the tire doesn't fall off. But you know, two or three tenths. Um, on a 70 or 80 lap run. Well, we, you go back here to the old racetrack, you go back here to, so even when I think the track was was, was redone, um, we had a tire that would fall off a good bit more and you had to worry about pedal on the car and handling. You just don't have that anymore. And I think that that's where the the issue really lies. I think that, um, you know, Bruton's, Bruton's doing his job to appease the fans, but in the end, I think it's the tire that's, that's dictating the racing. They're doing a good job with the tire. They just need to make a tire that falls off and has the durability, which is not easy to do. So, um, you know, we, we talk about that at different racetracks all the time, but, um, you know, that would, that would definitely change the racing. When, you go, when, you, when you're falling off a second, second and a half at times over an 80 lap run, you come in to put tires on, it's gonna be faster, that's the idea. But now when it's falling off three tenths and you say you're 60 laps from your fuel window and your next fuel window is only gonna be, um, you know, it's only gonna put you to the end of the race, you're gonna stay out and you're not gonna get past because it's too difficult to pass. Only being, even if you're three tenths off, it's too difficult to pass. The tires refire too well. So it's just, uh, to me, the racing here is more of a product, byproduct of the tires than it is the actual track and the banking or anything else. I knew I'd get you fired up on that one. You're an engineer. I like to ask these questions. I've talked to Goodyear about that, and they can layer tires. I don't know if, if you've been to the Goodyear plant and see how they actually build them by hand. Yeah. You probably have. Yeah. They can layer like 10 laps of Goody and then 20 laps of medium and then 10 laps of harder, something like that. And they've actually talked about that, I guess, with NASCAR. I don't know. Would you suggest something like that for a couple of these racetracks that they might? Um, well, I mean, whatever it takes uh, to keep the durability and change that you know, that fall off is what it, they have to do. If they have to do it that way or if they can go back, you know, I mean, the, the big part of what we're doing is, you know, these green tires, which is great for the environment, but it has a, to me, I don't know if that's the actual answer, but it has a byproduct on the, uh, the durability of the tire and the raceability of the tire at the same time. So, um, you know, they, it's their responsibility. They're the, they're the only tire manufacturer out there to, you know, that can fix it. And, um, you know, how they fix it is up to them. But to me, that's, that's what we need. It's not, it's not about going out there and spending millions of dollars and grinding off four inches of concrete. It's about, which, and I, and I know why Bruton did it, but in the end, it's not the actual answer. <laughs>